Hey friends, this is Kyle. Welcome to another tutorial. This time we're going to be using Adobe After Effects. We're going to create a snowy image, uh, snow falling, however you want to look at it, on top of a still image. This is what it's going to look like. All right, if that's something you want to do, then stay tuned. Let's get started here. I'm going to make mine uh, full HD, 1920 by 1080. Uh, the time, the duration, let me say whatever you want the final uh, loop to be, whether it's 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it is, add two seconds to it. So I want mine 30 seconds. I'm going to make my duration 32 seconds. It'll make sense later as we go, but trust me on that. It, uh, it'll make a difference. All right. So let's bring in a picture. Okay. The picture technically can be uh, anything you want. Actually, you don't even have to put it in yet. Uh, so, just uh, come over here to your effects and presets, wherever it may be. You may have to come over here and go window uh, effects and presets. I just type in CC and particle world pops up right here. Okay. What we're going to do is come over here and create a new solid. We're going to name this one Close. I'm going to drop that CC Particle World right onto that layer. And for the time being, I'm going to just turn off the picture in the background. Now we have a few things to change. Okay. Uh, the first thing I like to do is get rid of the grid. It's unnecessary for what we're doing. Uh, All that right there under grid and guides you can turn off it's it's not necessary for for this what we're showing you birth rate well let's see what it looks like right now okay that looks nothing like snow so we're gonna come back to birth rate in a bit let's start at producer we're gonna start with the radius X 0.8 radius Y 0.8 and radius Z I think we're gonna do um, 0.2 on that okay still doesn't look like snow but hang on fractal omni as the animation type under physics gravity now the gravity let's set it to 0 0.02 okay and the particle instead of line that's the default we're gonna set it to faded sphere and the birth color went white death color we want white the birth size uh, for this Let's use, let's try 0 0.06, I think is what I, I did before. Birth size and death size. We don't want them getting larger or smaller the longer they're on the screen. The snowflake size should stay the same. Size variation, 75. Okay. Now one thing we can do is come back up to the producer and change the Y position okay that's the that's the up and down the north and south we're gonna change that to negative one that's gonna put the emitter up here above the screen so things fall now the the particles if you notice just select a particle to watch as it falls 
it actually is gonna disappear. That's longevity. So longevity, let's make that like eight seconds. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Birth rate, let's crank that up. Let's see, 10. Okay, let's try that. Okay, some of these particles I feel are, are a little too close to the screen, like that one there. So we can actually back the Z position back it up let's try point eight okay that's better still a little bit fast uh, you can come over here to the physics and you can increase the resistance that's too much Let's try 0.3. Let's see what that looks like on the picture. Point 0.2. That's better. Okay, we need more snow though. So what we're going to do is create another solid. We're going to name this one far left. And come over here and we'll just copy this and paste it in here. Now we want to change it up a bit. For one, uh, it's going to the, the snowflakes would be right on top of each other. You would never see the the second effect of the snowflakes. So we've got to change uh, position. If we move the the position of this one, let's, let's see, this is left. So let's go negative uh, negative point three. And let's try leaving the rest of that just like it is on that one. Okay, the, the closer the snowflake is to you, the faster it's going to look like it's falling. The further away, the slower it's going to look like it's falling. So since these are the far, then let's change the resistance to 0.3. Turn the picture off there. Turn off the close. Okay. We'll give that a shot. Let's copy this one. Come down here, create a new solid. This one's going to be called far right. paste that effect and we will change the position X to instead of negative 0.3 we're gonna go positive 0.3 and that's gonna move it to the right and we can change the random seed so that the exact same particles aren't falling we can change this one to I mean anything I mean just a, a couple of numbers it's gonna change dramatically otherwise if you had two effects that were side by side just moved over a little bit and they were happening at the exact same time like CC particle world for instance you would see 
that the same particles were following both on the left and the right side. So if you change the, the random seed, it literally randomizes where those effects are taking place. So you can have the exact same effect happening multiple times, even with the everything identical as far as the position, the radius, the birth size, etc. But as long as you change the random seed, you'll get two different looking effects. So we can actually go into the far left and do the same thing, just change it just a little bit. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Bring in the far left and bring in the close. I'm thinking maybe the close is not quite close enough. So let's go to the close layer and look at the, it's going to be the uh, Z radius. No, let's leave that. It's the Z position. Let's try 0.5. Okay. We get a little render preview going here. There we go. I like that. That's fine with me. So, I mean, play with it all you want. Of course, uh, you can change things and and whatever. It's your video. Or it's your your uh, loop you're trying to create. But uh, one thing you do need to know is out here in the middle, there's plenty, all the way to the end, there's plenty of particles. But when you start over here at zero, those particles begin to emit. So they will just start falling at that point. So the way to prevent this, you don't want this in your loop unless you want just your snow to start falling like it just started snowing. And that's a cool effect as well. However, if you want a continuous loop of just snow falling, like the loop I showed you at the beginning of this video, then what you need to do is find, let's, let's turn the image off so we can see the snow real well, find where the snow is consistent all the way down to the bottom. Okay, right here wouldn't be good. Over here looks like it's it's working real well. So we could start, just to be safe, let's start right here around the eight second mark. That's good solid snow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these layers, all my snow layers, and I'm going to come down here just below the eight second mark, and I'm going to select these layers, and I'm going to drag them over this way. What I'm going to do is take my, my a little uh, selection here. I'm going to bring it all the way over here, and you'll be able to see what's going on. Okay, I'm, I'm holding down, and I'm dragging these layers over to here. So now, starting from zero, those effects are taking place instantly. Reason is, the beginning of these layers, where the particles begin, are now way over here in the section, if that makes sense. All I can do is, now what I can do is just drag the ends out here. So now I have complete particles the entire 32 seconds of this clip. Let's turn my layer back on. Okay, everything's looking good. I'm going to select all of this, right click, pre-compose. I'm just going to name this snow. Scene, move all attributes into the new composition, hit OK. Now I have 
a single video clip, 32 seconds long. Now the problem with leaving it just like this and trying to loop it is as you see those particles falling, it gets all, all the way out here to the 32 second mark. Then it loops back around and comes back to the beginning. If you watch, fi fix your eyes on some particles here. As soon as I click on to the very beginning of this video, all the particles jump. It's going to be an obvious seam in your loop. It will not look seamless. So the way around this is I come, come somewhere here in the middle and with, with that layer selected you can come up to edit split layer. Now what it did is it made an incision on this layer and then split it into two different layers. Okay, so if I turn off the second one down here, there's literally nothing on this layer until it hits this mark right here. Then it starts playing. So with, let me slide this one above. With this one ending right here, this one picks up automatically. So if we take this all the way down, to the 30 second mark. Okay, let's zoom in here so we can get it right on the money. Okay, that's going to be the 30. And then we take this one and bring it all the way to the beginning, like so. Now when this when this comes around, let me turn this layer back on. When this comes around to this frame right there, the very next frame it sees will be this one, which is the the, the next frame in the actual video. I'm hoping this makes sense. Uh, that will give you a seamless loop. Now, what we need to do is fix this because as this goes and ends right here that one scene is going to jump off and, and start on the next one so we need to select this layer hit T for opacity we're going to come in right about here okay <clears throat> excuse me right where this next scene is starting put a, a keyframe, select a stopwatch, put a keyframe there, come out here almost to the very end, and then drop the opacity down to zero. What this is going to do is this one's going to slowly fade off over about a two second period. This one's going to fade off showing this one behind. It's going to give you a very fluid transition Okay, another thing we need to do is come over here and take this little guy, put it right on 30, right click, trim comp to work area. Okay, see that, see that again? Watch when it gets to here, there will be no jitter, no jump. I mean, it's just a, a seamless transition from the end around to the beginning. Okay. And this here is, it's not seamless, but it is a very smooth transition. Chances are unnoticeable if you don't know what to look for. So render this out, and you've got a, a snowy scene that will loop continuously with no, vis no visible uh, seam anywhere in the video. Hope you learned something, and thanks for watching. See you next time.